well in it. Um, start off by saying that we like the constitution that HMOs make to families, students, professionals, and migrant workers. But as I read on, I, I became quite appalled because from talking about care and concern for the people in those houses in 1993, by 1999 we were widening the HMO net to take in hundreds more properties. And then by the time we get to 920, we're talking about putting a cap on HMOs in particular streets. Now, I think if we're talking about a review, that's great. But to talk about a cap, talking about 200 metres, 25%, sounds very prescriptive. And it also sounds as if we think we've got the answer before we've done the research at all. I don't believe in discriminating against particular groups of people just because of the types of housing they wish to live in or the type of households they're in. I, I find that a very illiberal approach. And we're not talking about shops or building here, as we are with other sorts of plan. We're talking about people. Now, there's people in shared housing in my ward, in the bit near the cattle market in Cherry Houston Road. I don't see them as some kind of social problem to be kept to a minimum. They're ordinary people like you and me, maybe more normal than you and me. Um, not just <coughs> professionals and students, but also nurses, police, waitresses, social workers, all sorts of people. Many of them are people who cannot manage to get a mortgage, perhaps because they're in new jobs or in short term contracts, or don't have the money for a deposit. So they're obliged to go to the rental centre. Where I do get problems in my ward, like everybody else, I sometimes get major nuisance problems or complaints about noise. But they're not shared houses in the whole, they're, they're ordinary families. Now, I find that for a party that has so much to say about the gap between the rich and the poor, and the right to do so, I think this motion shows remarkably little understanding of the difficulty of finding accommodation in Cambridge, particularly for young people. And I think because of the demographic that we have in, in shared housing, it tends to be young people above all. And I, I wonder if you've given thought to an equality impact assessment on this, because I think you would find that it would affect young people more than other groups, and would be an indirect discrimination. And I do find that surprising to come from perhaps a much basic, I know you're involved in the equality panel of the council. There are many other reasons for renting or for sharing housing, you know, perhaps if you're at the beginning of your career and you don't know how long you'll be there. But of course it's a social way of living if you're a single person. They're not all neat little family units, and I don't think <coughs> we should try to, to push people into a particular way of living. I think the diversity of the population and lifestyles in Cambridge is one of the great things about this city, what makes it a vibrant place to live in. I find that this motion and conclusions that it comes to do seem to fly in the face of some of the statements that you make in your manifesto, where you say that your priority is sustainable neighbourhoods for people of all incomes, and that your first duty, if you were a neighbour council, would be to stand up for all Cambridge residents. I don't see that in a motion which limits particular types of people and their lifestyles. I think it's a very frightening sign of what we might see if the, if the Labour group had came to power in the city. And I hope that you will vote against this motion. At four. <laughs> I hope you will vote against the motion, and I would like to see that as a sign of tolerance and liberalism in the way we're in our city and the diversity that we.